You cry? Nah. It makes me want to. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 saddest movies of all time. Oh, the truth. Ah, the truth. I don't even know what is the truth. After all these lies I have told. For this list, we'll be looking at the most heartbreaking and or depressing films ever made. As we'll be discussing the plots of these movies, a spoiler alert is now in effect. What has been your saddest cinematic experience? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Atonement With World War II as a backdrop, this British drama traces a doomed pairing from the 1930s to the 1940s. Come back. <laughs> Young Bryony wrongly believes that her older sister, Cecilia, is assaulted by Robbie. This sets off a course of tragic events that separate the couple, who were actually in love. Bryony writes this story into a book and tries to make the ending of the romance seem more hopeful. I gave them their happiness. In a twist, the writer reveals that Cecilia and Robbie both died in the early stages of the war. A series of painful scenes show the former dying in the Blitz and the latter contracting a fatal bout of sepsis at Dunkirk. This revelation serves as a gut punch to viewers who hoped they would reunite. I couldn't any longer imagine what purpose would be served by it. By what, sorry, served by honesty? By honesty. Or reality. Number 19, Me and Earl and the Dying Girl. A funny project with a lot of heart, this quirky comedy deals with the ups and downs of high school. Best case scenario, just survive, you know? Survive without creating any mortal enemies or hideously embarrassing yourself forever. Just survive until college? College? No. God, college is gonna be even worse. The central character Greg is a filmmaker who partners up with his friend to make parodies of classic movies. After reluctantly hanging out with a sick girl named Rachel, he comes to realise that his films could mean something to someone else. I should actually just stay here and keep you from watching that. Oh, I'm fine. Go make it. Okay. Okay. Have fun watching this incredibly terrible movie. Mm, have fun making the next one. The story touches on the pitfalls of being a teenager and struggling to express yourself through art. Greg and Rachel develop a special friendship as they warm up to each other, bonding over cinema and commiserating about the future. The title might give away the ending, but it doesn't lessen the impact of the final act. No one has done more to make me smile than he has, and no one ever could. Number 18, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. This imaginative sci-fi drama features Jim Carrey attempting to erase his ex-girlfriend from his memory after she does the same, only to encounter hiccups in the procedure. You'll remember me in the morning, and you'll come to me, and you'll tell me about us, and we'll start out. The central dilemma takes Carrie's character Joel into a flurry of memories about Kate Winslet's Clementine. Filmmaker Michel Gondry and writer Charlie Kaufman bring together their poignant vision for the future with incisive points about romantic relationships. You know, you will think of things, and I'll get bored with you and feel trapped because that's what happens with me. Okay. Joel's trek through his subconscious leads to emotional episodes revolving around his life. The process finds him confronting his weaknesses and the troubled romance that he wants back. Considered to be a modern classic, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind gives viewers a brutal look at the imperfections of love. This is it, Joel. It's gonna be gone soon. I know. What do we do? Enjoy it. Number 17, The Fault in Our Stars. In this adaptation of the John Green book, Hazel falls in love with fellow cancer patient Gus. Why are you looking at me like that? Because you're beautiful. Oh my god. I enjoy looking at beautiful people. Their teenage romance starts in Indianapolis and ends up in Amsterdam, where the two track down a mysterious author. The love story between the two takes a humane look at the lives of young people with serious medical problems. Rather than portraying them as victims, the film allows them to have an adventure together before one of them succumbs to the illness. One day, 
all of our labors will be returned to dust. <laughs> and I know that the sun will swallow the only earth we will ever have. And I am in love with you. It's a movie that you definitely have to watch with a box of tissues, just in case. After Gus sadly passes away, Hazel tries to carry on in an especially emotional ending. You don't get to choose if you get hurt in this world, but you do have a say in who hurts you. And I like my choices. I hope she likes hers. Okay, Hazel Grace? Number 16, Old Yeller. The classic Disney film Old Yeller has scarred young children for many generations. It was lucky for us, son, but it weren't lucky for Old Yeller. Shoot up some, but he ain't bad hurt. Set after the Civil War, the plot centers around a Texas boy who takes in a stray dog and learns to love it. The main bond between Travis and his canine friend plays out as they work on the homestead. Look at all them stars, Yeller. Bushels of them. Wonder if maybe Papa's lying out there on the trail somewhere. Looking at him too. As is the case with most movies about pets, this eventually leads to one of the more devastating endings in cinematic history. The main character decides to put Old Yeller out of his misery, leaving behind the innocence of his picturesque childhood. No, Mama. There's no hope for him now, Travis. He's suffering. You know we've got to do it. Number 15, The Shawshank Redemption. Andy Dufresne is handed consecutive life sentences for a double homicide he claims not to have committed. Of his sentence, he spends only 19 years in prison before making his way out. During that time, he endures abuse that tests his faith in humanity. I wish I could tell you that Andy fought the good fight and the sisters let him be. I wish I could tell you that. But prison is no fairy tale world. Frank Darabont's movie examines the effects of prison on various characters over the course of several years. A corrupt warden and sadistic prison guards also make his stay even more disturbing. I almost forgot. I'd hate to deprive you of this. Salvation lies within. The entire emotional arc of Dufresne builds up to a cathartic experience, including a dazzling escape and a moving conclusion. The Shawshank Redemption still stands as an engrossing study about the triumph of people over a corrupt system. Hope is a good thing, maybe the best of things, and no good thing ever dies. Number 14, Saving Private Ryan. Among the most famous depictions of World War II on screen, Saving Private Ryan follows American soldiers during the initial invasion of Normandy. Stand out of your weapons. Keep those actions clear. We'll see you on the beach. The first sequence depicts the D-Day landings without pulling any punches. Director Steven Spielberg accurately depicts the gruesome effects of warfare, putting audiences at ground level as hundreds of men are mowed down. The story then shifts to a mission concerning the whereabouts of the titular private. Boy's alive. We are going to send somebody to find him. And we are going to get him the hell out of there. Forcing army men to confront their worst fears on the battlefield, the movie takes a hard look at the many sacrifices made to save one soldier. The last scene only drives home that notion as most of the characters lose their lives in combat. Earn this. Earn it. Number 13, Moonlight. This Oscar-winning drama follows Chiron through his turbulent childhood, teenage years, and adult life. At some point, you gotta decide for yourself who you want to be. Can't let nobody make that decision for you. Director Barry Jenkins' vision allows for three distinct eras of personal growth, during which the main character deals with his abusive mother and discovers his sexual identity. He also receives guidance from a drug dealer who becomes a father figure in his life. His first encounter with another student doesn't pan out, later leading to harassment and an incident that finds him in trouble with the law. You won't even know. Oh, I don't? No. You think all this just started, boy? I ain't no boy. The hell you ain't. Chiron then transforms into a guarded adult for the final chapter. The film's tremendous impact comes together in the last few scenes as the hero reconnects with his former love. You're the only man that's ever touched me. I 
I'm the only one. Number 12, The Notebook. Nicholas Sparks' most famous book received a massively popular adaptation in 2004. I want all of you forever. You and me, every day. <laughs> Spanning a multi-year love affair, The Notebook follows the complicated courtship of Noah and Ali in 1940s South Carolina. It also features several gut-wrenching scenes, such as a moment in the rain, that might be the movie's most iconic image. It wasn't over. It still isn't over. Next to tear-inducing romance, there's also the frame story of both characters in older age. This both puts the plot into a larger context and makes the flashbacks that much more meaningful. Their last embrace ranks among the more touching finales in romantic film history. Good night. Good night. I'll be seeing you. Number 11, Titanic. James Cameron's epic project features two interlocking tragedies. The first story is an interpretation of the real-life incident, while the second concerns the fictional romance of Jack and Rose. Audiences know that the fateful voyage, as well as the relationship, will end in tremendous heartbreak. But that still does nothing to cushion the effects of the tragedy as it plays out. During the extended climax, the movie includes one sad moment after the other, as passengers fight for their lives. And so they lived happily together for 300 years in the land of Tirnanog, land of eternal youth and beauty. Thousands of casualties occur as the ocean liner rips apart and disappears into the water. To top everything off, the infamous door scene takes away any remaining hope of true love. I'll never let go. I promise. <laughs> Number 10, The Green Mile. The Green Mile is a Stephen King adaptation that showcases the relationship between death row inmate John Coffey and prison guard Paul Edgecombe. Death might be the initial focus of the film, but it's really all about the importance of life. I'm tired of all the pain I feel in here in the world every day. Throughout the movie, Coffee performs miracles and gradually shows that he's an extraordinary man. Michael Clark Duncan gives a vulnerable and commendable performance as the supernatural prisoner. I got to give you a little bit of myself. A gift. <laughs> Give her what's inside of me so you can see for yourself. His relationship with Tom Hanks' character represents a deep bond, one that is ultimately broken by an execution. This scene is especially sad, given the innocence of Coffee. The Green Mile is both unexpectedly moving and an amazing tribute to the potential of the human spirit. Kill them with their love. That's how it is every day, all over the Number 9, Requiem for a Dream. Darren Aronofsky's tale about people with substance use disorder might still be among the most dire movies ever. Please give a juicy welcome to Mrs. Sarah Goldberg! Following a group of desperate individuals, Requiem for a Dream doesn't mince words about the pain they go through. Jared Leto and Jennifer Connelly try to keep up their heroin habit, while Ellen Burstyn spirals into a world of prescription drug dependency. Every section of this plot comes with explicit drug use, terrible side effects, and desperate schemes to chase the next fix. Each character eventually reaches a dark conclusion of complete isolation in what just may be one of the most effective yet depressing anti-drug campaigns in movie history. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Yes, sir. Okay for work. Number 8, The Pianist. Telling the true story of Vladislav Spielmann, the pianist, follows the Jewish musician through the darkest days of World War II. Look. Come and look. Execution scenes show the Nazis' cruel and inhumane actions during the German occupation of Poland. 
Adrian Brody embodies the titular character in an emotional and physical performance that's bound to leave you shaken. I, uh, we, uh, Brody reportedly starved himself to achieve an authentic look for the part, portraying Spielmann's life in harsh living conditions such as the abandoned buildings of Warsaw. His brushes with violence, sickness and starvation present images of extreme sadness. This eventually builds to a moment of surprising humanity from the unlikeliest of people. What would they actually do when this is all over? I would play the clavier in the Polish Rundfunk. Can you tell me a name? I will be on the phone. Number 7. Manchester by the Sea Led by an Oscar-winning performance from Casey Affleck, Manchester by the Sea carries around a reputation for being depressing. This might be true to some degree, but it doesn't negate the film's powerful story about grief. I don't know what... No, this I don't is want not, to torture you. You're not, you're not torturing me. I just want to tell you. Affleck's character Lee Chandler returns home after his brother's death and finds himself facing his inner demons once more. He also struggles with the knowledge that he's responsible for a prior accident that led to the death of his children. Uh, I can't remember if I put a screen on the fireplace. I figure it's okay. This becomes significant as he's left to take custody of his teenage nephew. Manchester by the Sea is a painfully realistic study of grief and how it never leaves us, no matter how far we go. My heart was broken. It's always gonna be broken. But I know yours is broken too. Number 6. Grave of the Fireflies Studio Ghibli might be the gold standard of Japanese animation, with Grave of the Fireflies ranking among their most emotional works. It's the tale of a brother and sister trying to survive the end of World War II. They endure everything from air raids to food rationing, all while trying to make sense of the world around them. I want to go home. I hate living with her. But we don't have a house to go back to. The drama takes a hard look at life in war-torn Japan, with all of its desperation. Please, doctor, help her. Give her medicine. All this child needs is some food. She needs food. How can I help you? Well, Where am I supposed to get food? Losing both of their parents, the children end up on their own as they fight off starvation. There's ultimately one tragic element after another, leading up to a truly affecting finale. <laughs> Number 5. Blue Valentine Ryan Gosling and Michelle Williams give authentic performances in this stirring romance. Instead of being a bubbly rom-com, Blue Valentine features a raw look at a relationship that slowly falls apart. Baby, you made a promise to me, okay? You said for better or worse. You said that. Gosling and Williams play a couple with two different outlooks on life. They raise a child together, but their differences get in the way of their happiness. I don't know what to do. I don't know what else to do. Tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. I don't know what to do. Their story is told partly in flashbacks, as their troubled lives turn out to be anything but a fairy tale. Derek Sion France's film is not for those looking for escapist entertainment but rather an examination of love gone wrong. So out of love with you. I've got nothing left for you. Nothing. 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 There is nothing here for you. Number 4. Brokeback Mountain Brokeback Mountain was controversial upon its release, but time has been kind to this romance. I wish I knew how to quit you. Then why don't you? The plot finds two cowboys falling in love in the 1960s, they try to keep their relationship secret, which only drives them apart and creates lingering resentments. Jake Gyllenhaal and Heath Ledger have amazing chemistry in this realistic portrayal of love on the rocks. 
having to contend with societal norms, neither man gets to truly express their feelings for each other outside of brief meetings. Sometimes I miss you so much I can hardly stand it. Their story comes to a sad ending, as one of them tragically loses his life in an accident. Ledger's character reels from the loss in a touching third act that puts everything into perspective. Number 3. The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas Using two children as the focal point, this period drama takes a look at the Holocaust from an entirely different perspective. We're not supposed to be friends, you and me. We're meant to be enemies. Did you know that? The child of an SS officer discovers a boy on the other side of a fence, not understanding that his new friend is in a concentration camp. They spend time together and slowly begin to find these similarities in each other. Do you not like playing? Just not ball games. Not here. Most of the sadness of this film comes from the profound metaphor at its centre, using the innocence of the characters as a counterpoint to the horrors around them. The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas also features an earth-shattering ending that sees both kids suffering the same fate. It's alright. I think we're just waiting in here until the rain stops. Clouds off! Number 2. Sophie's Choice Boasting arguably Meryl Streep's finest performance to date, this historical drama delves into a traumatic decision during World War II. Sophie's Choice asks difficult questions about survivor's guilt and impossible resolutions that shape a life. Du kannst eins von den Kindern behalten. Wie bitte? For the title character, she finds herself unable to cope with the death of her child. This sets up a harrowing flashback where she's forced to choose between her two children. It's a scene that speaks to the horrors of that time period, presenting an awful event and its unshakable effects. Given its distressing subject, the movie chooses not to sugarcoat Sophie's story, opting for a heartbreaking ending in lieu of a happy conclusion. She loved it. We go down there and live. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Schindler's List Steven Spielberg's award-winning drama follows Oscar Schindler's journey from Nazi sympathizer to unlikely savior. I could have gotten off. I don't know if I just... I could have gotten more. Oscar, there are 1,100 people who are alive because of you. Along the way, many horrific scenes from the Holocaust are shown in graphic detail. Sequences such as the liquidation of the Krakow ghetto capture historical events in the most explicit way imaginable. Women to the left, men to the right. As all of this happens, Schindler maintains an uneasy relationship with the feared officer Amon Gut and other individuals who committed terrible atrocities. While the terrifying violence serves as one source of sadness, the film also has moments of hope that tug at the heartstrings. This balance functions like a roller coaster of emotion that cements Schindler's list as the saddest movie ever made. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.